So what we have here is a glass tank here full of the giant cave cockroach, or Blaberus giganteus. This cockroach is one of the largest species known to man, and it's certainly the largest cockroach in its genus. The giant cave cockroach is closely related to the cockroaches living in the Carboniferous coal forests of 200 million years ago. They've been common lab animals since the 1950s, and I can understand why. They're not very active, you know, they seem kind of docile, like most very large cockroaches. Uh, this is not a pest species. It just kind of chills out on the trees, surprisingly. So this is found in tropical areas of Panama, West Indies, and northern South America. It's an arboreal cockroach. So it lives in trees, and that's why they have a dead tree trunk in this cage, to let them climb on. And here you can see the food dish, and you see mostly juveniles, or subadults as they call them. You know, cockroaches, like all other insects, undergo different instars. Uh, they molt, or the more scientific term is ecdysis. Ecdysis is the mechanism by which insects such as these uh, shed their exoskeletons, and then they can proceed to the next instar of growth, until finally they're at the adult stage, and they're mature upon which they don't need to undergo ecdysis anymore because their current exoskeleton will fit them for the rest of their lives. So as they grow, their old exoskeletons, which are rigid, need to be split open along ecdysial lines, or these uh, seams, so to speak, weak lines in their external skeleton, or exoskeleton. But anyway, I digress. So the adults look kind of creepy looking to most people because they have these giant, oversized, transparent wings. And the juveniles also look creepy because they look like these discolored horseshoe crabs with uh, disgusting, you know, medium length antennae that are constantly moving around. So what these roaches are doing, much like any other large insect with long antennae, is they're just using those to detect smells. And that's one of their primary mechanisms of sense, you know. I guess they rely on that a lot more, and especially in dark places, although these are tree cockroaches, so you know, I'd figure they'd have a better sense of sight as well. So they're described as docile and nervous, and they like temperatures of, you know, the mid-20s in terms of Celsius. You know, humidity, they like it on the high side, 75 to 80 percent. And, you know, fully grown, these can be up to 10 centimeters in length. That's pretty big. And, you know, the babies and adults eat things like... Um, garden vegetables, you know, romaine lettuce, bananas, apples, carrots, uh, fruits and vegetables. You can feed those things to them. So these giant cave cockroaches are described as both docile and nervous. They can live in tanks like this, but you know, how much big the tank is really depends on the number of cockroaches you have. And it's said that the height of the tank is more important than floor space since these are tree cockroaches they like to climb. Loberus giganteus goes by many other names. It's also named the Trinidad cave cockroach, the Trinidad giant cockroach, the Cuban giant cockroach, Cuban black spot cockroach, a glass wing cockroach for obvious reasons, the giant black spot cockroach, and the giant cockroach. So the last name is kind of dumb, you know, giant cockroach. That could mean anything. As typical for all roach species, uh, individuals undergo hemimetabolous metamorphosis, which means the change from juvenile to adult is gradual. So essentially they just keep molting or dicing and get bigger and bigger with new exoskeletons that harden in their now bigger, softer bodies. And then that's, you know, progression from instar to instar or larval stage to larval stage until they reach adulthood and get maxed out in size. The giant cave cockroach prefers areas of high moisture and little light, such as caves, tree hollows, and cracks in rocks. So their lifespan can be up to 20 months depending on the habitat conditions and what they're eating. In the wild, the majority of their diet is decaying plant material, but they're omnivores and scavengers, so they'll eat whatever they can. They can also eat bat guano, fruit, seeds, dead insects, and dead animals. So dead bats in caves that drown in the back guano, for instance. We've seen this in a lot of nature documentaries. Compared to Periplaneta americana, the American cockroach, which has gone all over the world, and it's basically that one-inch cockroach that sort of has minimal flying ability and sort of a reddish-brown, you know. That's your prototypical cockroach pest. Um, this cockroach actually has a much lower metabolic rate and uses less oxygen as determined by scientific tests. 
This explains why the giant cave cockroach appears to be lazy and slow in comparison to the American cockroach. That also means, however, that it doesn't need as much food and metabolic upkeep.